My name is Jeremy Hess with Achilles, and in this video, I'm going to review the basic elements of the Achilles Secrets Orchestration platform, as well as how the solution can be implemented within an organization. The topics we will cover include authentication, role based access control, the Achilles Gateway, and integrations, all meant to allow you to interact with the secrets stored in Achilles. I will also explain how these pieces all work together for organizational implementation of the platform. Before continuing, it's important to understand the personas interacting with Achilles. We generally see admin and end user personas. An admin is the one who configures Achilles within the organization. This includes defining the secrets virtual file system structure, creating and managing authentication methods, and access roles, etc. An end user, or what we're going to call a client, is generally any human end user, usually an employee in the organization, who consumes secrets for their daily work, or a machine identity, also called a workload, which integrates with Achilles to consume secrets. Let's start with our basic components. In order to connect your organization's users and machines with Achilles, an admin will configure an auth method such as OIDC, SAML, LDAP, a cloud IAM, and or Kubernetes in order to authenticate clients with Achilles. We also have an on-prem machine identity authentication method called Achilles Universal Identity. Clients will not usually be part of this process. Once a user or machine is authenticated to Achilles, they are given permissions to consume secrets based on an access role. Achilles' role-based access control ensures that each secret is made available for use only to the client that has proper permissions. In addition, Achilles enables attribute-based access control through the use of subclaims. It's always best practice that a user is given the least amount of privilege as possible, so they can only access the minimum number of secrets they need. One of the most important aspects of working with Achilles is a component called the Achilles Gateway. The Achilles Gateway is a stateless Docker container, also available on Kubernetes, that is deployed within your internal network. This extension adds an extra layer of protection between your private network and the cloud, and allows clients within your network to communicate internally with the Gateway without requiring direct internet access, and the Gateway in turn communicates with the Achilles SaaS services using outbound connections only. The Gateway also enables advanced functionality for working with dynamic secrets, rotated secrets, and bring-your-own-key capabilities, as well as Kubernetes and LDAP authentication, secrets migration, and log forwarding. The Gateway also ensures important caching and service continuity, as well as zero-knowledge encryption that gives you the ability to create your own internal key fragment for all encryption operations as part of the DSC technology which means that Achilles can't see your secrets. Achilles is fully API-driven and provides integrations for all the most common DevOps tools and SDKs. We offer native integrations for CI-CD tools, infrastructure as code and config management tools, programming languages through SDKs, a dedicated injection plugin for Kubernetes, our CLI, and more. By integrating with these, Developers and DevOps can keep using their tools of choice without compromising on the security of their credentials. These native integrations allow developers to easily integrate applications with Achilles and allows DevOps to manage credentials within their pipelines without keeping any sensitive data in any application. This includes the ability to import secrets from other vaults and applications. Now that we've reviewed in detail the basic components of the Achilles solution, let's discuss how a secrets management implementation could work from two different perspectives. First, a company hierarchy, and second, an end-to-end -end use case. To understand how authentication and access roles work in a practical way, let's take a look at an example company, RSO Global, that uses Okta as an identity and access management tool with a basic organizational structure as follows. Laura, an IT admin in charge of user access to company applications, Alex, a backend team leader, and Mary, a backend developer team member. The owner of Achilles within the organization is usually the IT admin or security lead, that's Laura. Laura naturally has full control over the Achilles platform. 
It is her job to configure and integrate the organization level authentication methods with a keyless, such as Okta, Cloud IAMs, etc. Let's say that Laura has just one group within Okta already set up for the backend dev team. She then goes into a keyless and creates a new auth method for Okta, and then an access role for Alex, the backend team leader. With his own manager role in a keyless, Alex gets full control with admin level permissions on everything in the backend path and can perform any action on any item type within that path, but not outside of it. He will then create another access role for his team that gives specific permissions to each team member, including Mary. For example, the backend team might be given access to read and list only secrets in order to consume them, but they would not be able to create, delete, or update them. We now have three different levels of permissions with least privilege, and you can see how the hierarchy of access in a keyless works within an organization. Now let's take a look at how an end-to-end -end use case demonstrates the ideas of authorization and access we just discussed. Let's take the example of a database that needs to be updated. Mary will need to log in to MySQL to do some work updating and adding data. To do this, a best practice would be that Mary doesn't actually have a standing login and password to the database, but rather is given a temporary login and password on the fly, which has enough permissions to do what needs to be done. We call this type of credential a dynamic secret, which you can learn about in more detail in another section. In order to request a dynamic secret from MySQL or any other relevant application, a dynamic secret producer is created in a keyless to generate temporary credentials just in time, which Mary receives and uses to log in with. So now we can put this all together. Laura integrates Okta with a keyless for the organization's human users and creates the relevant access role for Alex with admin permissions within his path. Laura also configures the keyless gateway within the company's environment. Alex then creates an access role for his team. He also creates and configures the MySQL Dynamic Secret Producer. Finally, we have Mary, who requests a dynamic secret from a keyless, which she was given access to, and now uses those temporary credentials to log into the MySQL database, and her temporary user credentials will expire and be automatically revoked. So that's a short technical overview of the Achilles Secrets Orchestration Platform from the view of an organizational implementation, and one of many use cases of our secrets management solution. You can find more practical instructional videos in our portal. Thanks so much for watching.